do you find that? Did you ever ask him where the tip? Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> he's on the phone. I don't know. God, he must have made. Uh, he must have made pff, numerous phone calls. I'm, you know, I'm thinking six, anywhere from six to ten phone calls. You know, at minimum that particular day. To who? No, I don't know. You were. In a, he was in your car. Yeah, but he didn't, he didn't talk to anybody in my car. What would he do when he talked to people? Well, it's on the videotape. He would just, I mean, what do you do when you talk to people? Well, when he first got out of my car. What's on the videotape? I mean, when he was walking through the, when he's in the woods talking. No, I'm talking stuff. about when he was in your car. What, did he, he never had conversation? No, sir, not in my car, no, sir. So you just drove out there uh, with him to go find the body? Mm-hmm. Is that, is that what you understood you were doing? Mm-hmm. And you ask him who who did it? Who where's the tip come from? He said, "I'm not going to tell you." He just said, uh, "I think." Remember, we said he. I asked him, and he just. Uh, I think on two occasions, he just didn't answer. Just walked away. When this is later on during the day. Didn't that irritate you? No. I mean, as a private investigator, this is a blockbuster day, isn't it? Well. I think I've learned not to uh, believe everything Mr. Casey says. Oh, you think he's a liar? I didn't say that. Why don't you believe everything he says? Just heard a lot of stories. That, uh, just heard a lot of stories. Like what? And this is important. <sighs> just, um... You know, everybody enhances stories. Everybody does things. He and um, I'll, I'll tell you. Just tell us. He and uh, Mr. Baez had had a um, um, a run in or blow out or whatever. He stopped working for him. I, I guess sometime in uh, September, October, over a money issue, and uh, and um, um, and then you know he would tell me. Uh, No, just basically, um, I guess one story that told me about the that uh, Bias had gotten two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and he was supposed to pay um, Dominic out of that. You know, he never got any funds. You know, just things along so that line. Dominic told you that when he got the two hundred twenty-five thousand from when, when Bias got it, yeah, when that the Bias had promised Dominic money and didn't pay. Him. Well, I don't know if he's used, he didn't use the term promise, but you know, if he was working for uh, Bias. He expected to be paid. And Bias wouldn't pay him. Well, he did, he didn't pay him. Yeah. You know, I mean, according to him. So, Bi- so Dominic was working for Baez and for Cindy and George. Well, he worked for uh, Baez up until um, again, uh, sometime in either it's, it's in the it's in the the um, information when he was interviewed by uh, you know, Mr. Or Nick Savage and uh, John Allen. He, there's a date there, right. and then um, and then he had some kind of contracts or some kind of uh, agreements with uh, George and Cindy, and he had some kind of agreement with Casey also. And, but tell me why you don't believe everything Dominic Casey tells you or has told you. What were the stories you heard? It's important? Yes. Well, after they had the, after Dominic, again, this is Dominic's uh, story, and it's, again, it's in the, uh, it's one of the interviews, um, just basically that, uh, that Dominic had uh, uh, gone with um, Mr. Bias to, uh, to see Casey uh, while she was incarcerated, and that Dominic said that uh, on several occasions that uh, he thought that uh, Mr. Bias had an inappropriate relationship with, uh, or was trying to have an inappropriate relationship with uh, uh, Casey, and um and uh, that he had uh, he had warned uh, Baez that uh, he wouldn't tolerate that kind of activity. Yeah, tell me about that. There was something about the, the inappropriate contact with Baez and uh, Casey. There was something about some licorice. Yeah, just one of the stories uh, was that... Um, this is what Dominic told you? Yeah, yes, sir. What did he tell you about this licorice? Uh, just basically that uh, he had... Uh, I don't know if he had, um, he must have met uh, Bias at the um, at the jail, and Bias had taken some again, you know, this is, this is a Dominic story, not my story. Right. Uh, that uh, Bias had taken some licorice out there. Supposedly there was um, some kind of a 
holes in a plexiglass, and he put a piece through it, and he started chewing on one end, and she started chewing on the other end. And that, um, and that they were there for several hours. Nothing was, no, the case wasn't talked about. As they left, um, they were walking across a, um, um, a yard, and Dominic said uh, to Baez, don't say anything, there's microphones in the area. Okay, and then after they left, um, Dominic um, pretty much he, he didn't use the term jacked up. Just uh, he just uh, told uh, Mr. Baez again. He said he told Mr. Baez that uh, he didn't approve of that um, that behavior and he wanted to tolerate it. That's pretty much it. He told you that. Yeah, and I'm you know you take it with a grain of salt. You know he's had he's had an attitude with uh, Mr. Baez over money, so you figure you take it with a grain of salt. But but so he sticks the he his he sticks the licorice through and. He and Casey kind of nibble it till they get yeah, to the end. Yeah, that's what he said. Oh my God, um, what agreement did Dominic have with Casey? What agreement? I I didn't read it. Did he have an agreement with Casey? Yeah, he he had show, um, he had shown me you know like a stack of papers like you have there had Casey's signature in large you know, large uh, cursive writing, and he also had one with uh, George and Cindy also, and again that's in his statement to the police. When did he have the When did he enter the agreement with Casey? I I don't know the date. But he showed you an agreement that he no, had yes, with sir. Casey. I didn't read it though. Was it to be to to investigate? I, again, I didn't read it. Um, did there ever become a time that you felt like that Dominic may have been having an inappropriate interaction with Cindy Anthony? No, no, let's just say I was uncomfortable sometimes around them. Isn't it fair to say that you got a feeling as a private investigator trained to that you thought that there that there was a familiarity between the two of them that was let's say less than professional? I had that feeling, yes, sir. And and describe for me uh, one of those observations that you made that you made between the two of those two. That made you feel this way. Well, just um, just uh, one time. Uh, in fact, the evening that um, we were, uh, they were being fingerprinted, um, um, like say George got fingerprinted first, and Cindy, and then we were waiting for Lee. Um, uh, um, Mr. Anthony and or Dominic uh, was sitting in one chair, and um, Mrs. Anthony was sitting in the other, and they were like holding hands. And just you know, doing this kind of thing, and she's talking about he's he's uh, he's her rock. One for him, she won't be able to get through this. And, he said uh, that to her. No, he just said it to. I'm well, your she rock. She said that. She said that. That was her saying that. She said, "I'm your. You're my rock." Yeah, she, it was just a young conversation. I said, "Yeah, you're you're my rock." Without you, I couldn't get get through this kind of thing. And what was George doing there, holding hands? My God. Like I said, it was uncomfortable. And then of course who, that. Who started rubbing? Who started rubbing whose arm? Um. It's, you know, it kind of starts out, you know, like, you know, you're holding hands, just kind of patting the hand, just kind of like doing this kind of thing. But, you know. It, um, when you saw that, what did you think? I think, Dominic, uh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking wouldn't you be, wouldn't be doing that with my wife. Yeah. Did you, did you think that there was, as you watched this kind of thing unfurl over these months, did you think there was a kind of a romance brewing there? I'm not going to go that far. How far would you? Go. Um, well, let me finish the answer to the last question. Okay. Okay. And the rest of it, you, you asked me what had given me this, this um, uncomfortable these thoughts. Yeah. Okay. Then after we left there, as I mentioned, um, Dominic had taken his car to um, the uh, the church, left it there, and he asked me to take him back to his car, and which I did, you know. And then I took George out, to, and then uh, he asked for Cindy to ride with him, so she got in my car. You know, and uh, for with Dominic, uh, I took George out to the hotel, and uh, what happened? Well, like I say, then uh, uh, George went to the hotel. I stayed in the lobby for a long period of time, and uh, uh, I tried to call Dominic several times. He didn't answer the phone, but he eventually did call me. Who did? Dominic. Where was Dominic? Said he had gotten lost. Who was he with? Cindy. And did you did your antennas go up as a private eye? Um, yeah, pretty much. What did you think it was going on? Let's just cut to the, let's just cut to the chase. Well, I just thought, you know, you know, uh, I found the hotel in uh, fifteen twenty minutes. I don't know why somebody who lives in this area couldn't find the hotel in the same amount of time. 
Do you think it got to a point in time where Dominic may have done almost anything for Cindy to help her? Well, it's a little question, but uh, I wouldn't say anything. No, I don't. No, I don't think. Uh, I don't think he would do anything to break the law. If that's what you're asking. Right. 